Hello and warm welcome everyone for today's author speak session on improving total human, uh, human milk collection in a hospital without a human milk bank, which is a quality improvement initiative at an urban tertiary care teaching hospital by Dr. Supriva Patnaik and the team. Uh, this paper has been published in the BMG Open Quality South Asia edition. So before uh, we start, I would request uh, Dr. Vikram Tata to welcome all and introduce a steam guest for this evening. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sonam. In fact, it's a warm uh, feeling to have Dr. Satish Tiwari, sir, our senior and uh, you know a pioneer in the field of comprehensive lactation management centers in the country. Uh, and also, colleagues, I'll be giving the introduction of Dr. Tiwari shortly, and also my colleagues, uh, Dr. Suprabha Patnaik, and uh, Professor Shija Vijayan, who will be moderating uh, today's session. And to all the participants from the uh, communities of practice who've taken time out despite busy schedule to join this. The session will also be recorded and placed on the communities of practice uh, YouTube channel, like always, for most of the people to access it across uh, 54 countries globally. So, Dr. Uh, Suprabha Patnaik will be introduced formally by Professor Shrija Vijan, but I will do uh, the introduction of Satish Tiwari, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for being on the Communities of Practice platform. Uh, professor Satish Tiwari is a pro senior professor of pediatrics at Amravati Medical College. Sir has been the founder of uh, the Human Mink Banking Association of India and has been the person who is the driving force behind all the nutrition uh, guidelines, breastfeeding guidelines, which Government of India is making with IAP IYCF chapter. And Sir is also currently the chairperson of the IAP IYCF chapter. Sir has also authored many books, and the most recent one is a book on nutrition. And uh, we are very privileged, Sir, indeed, for you to agreeing to be a part of this and giving your expert opinions, and also guiding the participants regarding the setups where we don't have a human milk bank or a comprehensive lactation management centers, how we can increase the donor milk production from the mothers. So thank you so much, sir. And thank over to, Vikram. yeah, thank you so much, sir. So over to uh, Professor Shija Vijayan now to take the webinar forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Good evening to all. On the behalf of NQS and family, I welcome you all for today's author speak speak session we have among us uh, eminent author and speaker dr suprabha patnaik ma'am ma'am is associate professor neonatology in b u uh, d m c pune uh, governing board member national wide quality of care network and qcn Ma'am is also course coordinator of online point of care quality improvement and coaching. Ma'am is uh, clinical quality led department of quality assurance, BMJ uh, Pune. Then Ma'am is a uh, coach, national coach for Lakshya program and also NSK, uh, NSSK and advanced neonatal resuscitation trainer. Uh, Ma'am is uh, going to speak today's, uh, uh, Ma'am is going to take today's session. Over to you, Ma'am. Uh, thank you, Professor Shrija. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining this session. First, I would like to thank the Nationwide Quality of Care Network for inviting me over for this uh, author speak session and uh, giving me this platform to share our journey of this quality improvement with respect to improving the donor milk collection. So I'll just share my screen. Yes. Uh, so once again, I thank everybody for uh, uh, taking out time and attending today's session. So uh, in today's session, I would be sharing our journey, our team's journey in this uh, field of improving the donor's milk collection, which is very, very essential, especially when we have a neonatal intensive care unit attached with the setup. 
So in today's session, I'm just, I'm going to share the QI story of our journey and the challenges which we faced during this journey and how can we move forward. So uh, all of us are very well aware of the relationship between the type of milk which is given to a neonate, especially the vulnerable, the sick ones, and the incidence of necrotizing enterocolitis or the feed intolerance in them. And it has been proven that the usage of donor milk consumption, mother's own milk is best, no doubt. Thereafter, the donor milk, milk consumption definitely reduces the incidence of feed intolerance and NEC. And NEC, all of us know that we all are scared of NEC because it is it has got long-term, of course, morbidity, mortalities associated with it. Hence, the availability of mother's own milk and next, the pasteurized donor milk becomes very, very important component of a care which we deliver to a vulnerable neonate. And this availability of donor milk becomes at times a constraining factor in various NICUs. In our NICU also, the same thing was happening. So to give a background regarding our setup, it's an 850-bedded urban teaching hospital with 50 bedded NICU and an annual in, um, uh, admission rates of around 1500 babies. Among them, at least 50% of them are extramural delivered in other setups and transferred. So the availability of mother's own milk per se has, is a challenge. So that's why we took up this quality initiative regarding improving the donor's uh, collection of the donor milk because in our setup at that point of time, we did not have a milk bank. At least collecting milk and giving that to a uh, milk bank and making the availability of pasteurized milk bank, improving it in that bank would help us in getting a good amount of pasteurized donor milk. With that intention, we started off with this quality improvement journey. So at that point of time, we didn't have a milk bank with our staff. Again, there were uh, no as such dedicated into lack. We didn't have a lactation counselor also. And the uh, donor milk, the milk banks were situated quite away from our setup, almost like a distance of 20 to 25 kilometers, adding on to the problem of procuring as well. So for this, to address this problem of improving the donation collection in our setup and giving it to the milk bank and hence ensuring an availability. We started off this journey and in the team we, which we formed, we had our nursing in charges, we had the staff nurses, the neonatologists, the senior uh, re uh, resident in the neonatology posted with us, the junior pediatric resident who was posted with us. In our hospital, we have medical social worker who in our department itself, we have one. She the ward coordinator and the physiotherapist dedicated to the ward. So we try to utilize all our human resources which were available to us in our neonatal intensive care unit in the various levels, level three, level two, level one. And also in this journey, we involved our parents because we wanted to know their perceptions also. And also the in charge of a human milk bank with whom we coordinated during this journey of our improvement. So she was also part of our team. And with this, the team set out to, with the aim of increasing the human milk collection in our setup to just 500 ml per week, per in four weeks time. And if we look at this, you know, 500 ml will sound very uh, less quantity. But uh, what we had uh, done, the what we when we had looked at our consumption of donor milk, it was coming up to almost a liter per week and the collection collection was hardly anything. So that's why we started off with at least having key, we should be able to achieve at least 50% of what we are consuming. With that, keeping that in mind, we started with an aim of collecting 500 ml per week over next four weeks time. And when the team looked into the various causes, ki why uh, the milk donation, we were not able to have it in our setup, though we had an NICU, we had the mothers, we had a postnatal ward with at any given point of time having at least 20 to 30 mothers in our setup. Still, when we analyzed the situation, we found that ki there was lack of awareness regarding the donation among the mothers. Also, among the, there was a lack in the healthcare providers also regarding donation perhaps because we didn't have a milk bank. 
And also with respect to milk donation, people have their own myths. Like if I donate, maybe my milk will reduce. So there were a lot of myths which we found in, during our interview with the mothers. And as I had mentioned earlier, 50% of our babies who were admitted in NICU, they, are, they were extra extramural. Now also we have almost 50% extramural. So the mothers would be admitted in some other hospital. Having the milk itself would, was a challenge. And with respect to collection of milk, there was uh, the way the milk had to be collected, expressed, transportation. All these were adding on to the problem with respect to the donor milk collection. So when we looked at our setup, how things were moving on, as I said, we didn't have a donor milk, milk, milk bank. But we were in the past also, we were trying to uh, counsel people for milk donation, but yet things were not happening the way we wanted it. So when we had looked at our process, how the system was working, the babies who were admitted in NICU, the parents or the relatives were counseled, but at times counseled, at times not counseled. And then the consent for donation had to be taken. And thereafter the milk, we had to uh, verify the medical documents and then the milk was collected. It had to be collected, stored. And then we had to tie up with a milk bank for collecting this uh, milk, which had been collected and kept in the refrigerator. And then this milk was transported to the other setup. And those mothers who were uh, admitted in the NICU other level, level one and all, then again, there was like the counseling, all these were not consistent. So there were a lot of issues with respect to the donor milk collection per se in our setup. So when we started off with our journey, excuse me. Yeah. So first we had to establish a system of collecting and transporting because as I said, ki this whole process of collection and transportation was not streamlined. So first we had to look into this process of collection and transportation had to be streamlined. And thereafter the next step of collecting, storing and counseling, all that we took up. So first step, we looked into the bottles, uh, the availability of bottles, how we were going to sterilize it the refrigerator in which, I mean, where we are, we're going to stock it before being transported to the milk bank. And because there were different teams avail, uh, involved, the milk bank team of the other hospital and our hospital, so we had established a WhatsApp group for a smooth communication, whether the milk was collected, whether there was a need for uh, come, uh, the van had to come and collect the milk from our hospital transporting and getting the milk, pasteurized milk. So accordingly, there was a lot of communication which had to go on. So we did establish a WhatsApp communication group for a smooth um, uh, communication. And during our team meetings, it uh, was, again. I mean, we had to look into the, all of us know the basics of uh, quality improvement that in the team, various team members, the roles and responsibilities have to be allocated so that people are aware of their responsibility. Similarly, in this uh, journey also, we kept on having team meetings and everybody from the, the responsibility of collecting the milk, the responsibility of having the consent form filled, transportation communication, all that was streamlined during the team meetings. And when we started off, we had to find out the reason why, though there were mothers, there were lactating mothers also, but we interviewed the mothers one-to-one -to, -one to know about their perception of milk donation because that was very important. And we had to analyze the reasons why the milk donation collection was uh, not that much as we would have expected. So in order to motivate the mothers the, to address the various reasons, this, these interviews we took up with a couple of mothers. And thereafter, after speaking to them, the various root causes which I had shown in the previous slide, the lack of awareness that there's something called that they can donate milk and the milk can be utilized for babies who are vulnerable, who's, I mean, who do not have their mother milk mother's milk available. All those awareness and uh, was lacking. So we thought of addressing these issues in our, the various change ideas the team thought of. So uh, the different change ideas here, we what we found that, that, that we had to address the knowledge information of the mothers who were the potential donors so in order to address this we came up with the idea of having 
a group counseling of the mothers who are admitted with us, whether they were in level one, that is with the mothers or the mothers who, whose babies were in the NICU or, and in the PNC, postnatal ward. So for the group counseling also, it was decided that we'll have a structured group counseling of 15 to 30 minutes where, I mean, not only the donation part, the breastfeeding, couple of other things associated with breastfeeding were also addressed so that that availability of people at one given point of time. And we utilize, take this opportunity to address various issues. And the timing also had to be adjusted so that it, there was consistency in taking the group counseling. So after the consultants rounds, the timing was fixed and before the visitors timing, because whenever the visitors timing was there, mothers, of course, it was their lunch time or resting time. So they could not focus on listening to the group counseling, which would go on. And to begin with, it was start, thought of like twice a week, the group counseling part. And again, the team looked into the priority or order of the person who is going to do the group counseling. And this was very important because different people would take leave at different time. They would have different responsibilities, but we did not want the group counseling to be missed out. So in order of priority, the senior resident neonatology was the one who was responsible for taking the group counseling sessions. If she was not available, then we had the neonatal physiotherapist so she was available on the floor and she was with our team if when she was also not available then the uh, neonatology consultant would take the classes if they were also not available or busy with some work then the nurse in charge would take the session and if even if she was not available then we had the medical social worker and thereafter the ward coordinator so we had prioritized the people who would take this group session so that we would not miss out even a single session for our uh, this journey and along with the group counseling what we found out because milk donation is a uh, thing which requires a lot of motivation or counseling mothers to donate when they uh, on uh, after feeding their baby of course the baby would i mean after the baby was fed and they had extra milk they could donate so there was a lot of importance of doing the counseling and twice a week counseling was fine, but then many, uh, there was like turnaround. Some mothers would get admitted, babies would get ad admitted. So we even thought of doing individual counseling because one-to-one -one counseling, motivating them for donation or at least giving them, passing on the information regarding the donation, how it can be done and the method of the hand washing, collection, where to collect and providing all the things. I mean, the, from the sterile bottles, where it is kept, all that information again was given to these parents during these sessions. And individual counseling also were done on daily basis. And this responsibility was given to the uh, medical social worker because on a daily basis, she would interact with each and every patient. So during her interaction time, we took that interaction as an opportunity for doing even the individual counseling. So she was responsible for doing individual counseling and the days when she was not available, the ward coordinator. So we have a ward coordinator on floor. So on those days, the ward coordinator would pitch in. And then the question came of holidays when these neither the ward coordinator or the social worker would be available. So for those days, the nurses who were posted, the senior nurse who was posted in that area, she would, as it is, she would interact with the mother so again, it was her responsibility to look into the individual counseling. So when it comes to donor milk, the various interventions, all of us understand that it is like the mothers need to be told about this. They have to be motivated about donating the extra milk, what they have. So there is a lot of stress on these counseling sessions. So same thing, even our team did it. And it was like we could see that it was effective people were I mean at least the awareness level went up and they could understand and those mothers whose babies had received donor milk in uh, at some given point of time they were the best donors because they could understand the value of donating the milk and that uh, milk being of value to another baby so contributing to some other family some other baby so that also during this interview feedback sessions we could get that information 
so along with this one to one interaction or group counseling we thought ki maybe we can run some uh, videos regarding the uh, expression of milk collection the various uh, uh, information from expression to collection and uh, the transportation all that information so we took up this so uh, these uh, bpni network sorry for the spelling this thing they have these videos very nice videos we played them in the ward so we had a tv we on a pen drive we played it and we looked at the response and we found that the uh, the response was not very great in terms of people taking up or listening to these videos in terms of the duration so the first challenge was that the duration were long so mothers didn't have that much of time to sit and listen so we had to cut down on the duration and the number of sessions so in various pdsa or testing cycle we had to find out you know what was the best suitable time where a video could be played and people would look at it also because there were challenges in terms of their own meal visiting hours so after couple of uh, testing and all we could figure out ki okay in the evening uh, 15 minutes video that worked out but again uh, that i mean they had to be somebody had to coordinate when the video would play and that was the responsibility of the medical social worker or the ward coordinator who would look into this so we had to do couple of cycles iterating ki what is the best duration timing where people would utilize these videos and then even we came up with the idea of introducing a written information to the parents whose children were babies were getting admitted to our nicu regarding expression of milk and some information regarding donation of milk or like the transportation everything if the baby was separated from them so we even introduced a uh, standardized in the local language some information regarding these aspects so these were the various changes which we took up during our journey to improve the collection of donor milk so here you can see this is our ward and here this is our uh, social worker who is taking a session on just not just about donation of milk breastfeeding milk so one opportunity you utilize to address couple of issues so this pictorial is regarding that and this is also our physiotherapist again a session on breastfeeding donation of milk all that clubbed into this group sessions where you can see the father the grandparents and we would encourage that all i mean all those uh, not only mothers their relatives whoever was available to attend the sessions because it is important that ki the awareness of everyone not just the mother because grandmother everybody has a say so it is important to address everyone and to improve their knowledge their awareness so we had these sessions which we uh, which were done on a regular basis and we kept on collecting the data data collection was very very important so in the beginning of the project itself we were very particular that where we are going to enter the data who is going to collate it because without data we would not come to know ki what exactly is happening how much milk is collected how much our sessions are going on so in this slide we can see that in the low uh, sorry yeah so the lowest panel here with the time this is like this we did it in november 2020 till february 2021 by the time the paper we had sent across for sharing so as with time the amount of donor milk and as i had mentioned earlier our aim was just 500 ml per week when we started off our journey and then the various process measures the weekly group counseling the individual daily counseling and here we can see when the daily counseling had dipped down at during the 16th week even the collection had dropped down because it is collect donating is very uh, i would say ki subjective this thing which requires reinforcement again and again when they have extra milk and once they are convinced they themselves feel good about donating and as an outcome measure if the consumption of it's like an indirect surrogate marker ki okay so over a period of time very short duration but yes our incidence of nac which was low yes but then it fell down further and the availability of donor milk 
improve with time. Of course, it was not that we had a milk bank, but that for a milk bank also to sustain, they have to have collection of donor milk. Then only they can pasteurize and disperse it. So everything gets related. So over a period of time here, we can see how the, uh, the, the project functioned. And this is for 18 weeks. And present, I mean, this was in the past, like 2000, February 2021. And this journey, we we wanted to share with everybody. We had sent across the uh, manuscript and thanks to the NQSIN team. And we uh, this was published. And during the publication time also, when we were man, uh, preparing the manuscript also, because we were very, very careful about our data collection and data is very important when you are sharing your journey for everything from the process measures to the outcome measures. So it is important when we are taking up any quality initiative that from the beginning, we are very mindful about the not only the data collection, but what is happening to the various interventions and the feedbacks to document it, to journal it and keep it so that when you are sharing your story, all these things, they come in handy. So it becomes easier to narrate a quality story. And coming on to the present status, this is like way back in November. So the, the amount of milk collection that is in ML because our aim when we had started off, it was in 500 ML per week. So over a period of time, it improved and now on an average, we are having a collection of almost 15 liters to 45 liters, that monthly collection in our uh, hospital. So this data, we are still continuing to collect it and we have actually included the donor milk collection as a quality indicator of our department. So that way there is a continuous flow of data for us. And to summarize it, I would say ki we were able to reach our aim because we could do a thorough analysis of the problem of the lack of donor milk collection in our setup. We had a team and we could utilize all resources. So we may think, you know, how come a physiotherapist is involved in a donor milk collection? But she is part of the team and counseling and certain things which we can always in involve various other uh, paramedical staff also. And the change ideas, we just did not like after testing what worked as I had mentioned during the videos also, such as a uh, thing like video, but then you have to optimize the duration, timing of running, all those with various iteration we could figure out. And then implementing it was useful. And for sustainability, as I shared in my previous slide, Till date, we are able to sustain the collection of donor milk. And fortunately, for past couple of months now, we have a milk bank with us. But if before the milk bank came into existence also, the collection had improved almost 10 times from what we had thought, like to 500 ml per week, translating into 2 liters a month to 20 liters. And the data is continuously flowing and we are though uh, and we are keeping a close watch on it because as I said, ki donation, counseling, all this has got a lot of uh, human element to it. So we can provide the bottles, we can provide sterilized bottles, we can provide leaflets, but yes, the psychological, the counseling and uh, getting, making, I mean, making people aware of the value or the contribution which they are doing by donating, all that requires a human element. So this becomes a continuous work in progress. And uh, fortunately, I would say ki I have a good team and the staff, they are able to do that and we are able to get a donor, I mean, milk donation. So our babies are able to have good, I mean, those who are not able to get their mother's own milk have the pasteurized donor milk for consumption till the time it's medically indicated. So that was in short, our journey of improving the milk collection in our setup. So I